This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives. Oh, it's so good. In their infinite wisdom, Adobe have been gradually improving the adjustment brush tool with every major version of Lightroom, and they've just made one extra improvement to it in the last version as well, and I'm really stoked to see how far they've come with it. A lot of people don't know the true potential of the adjustment brush tool and what it can do for your images. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys all the different ways you can use the adjustment brush tool to take your photos to the next level. So with the adjustment brush, we're gonna start with the two most important keyboard shortcuts that you should know. Um, the first one is the K key on the keyboard. If you press K, you'll get a brand new adjustment brush and you'll see that on the right hand side, we've got this brand new window here with all of our options. We can control exposure, white balance, contrast, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, but if we come down to the bottom here, we've got our brush controls. So you've got A and B, which means you can select two different brush sizes with different parameters. We've got the size, which um, is pretty straightforward, so that'll just adjust the size. You can also scroll up and down if you've got a mouse, and that will change the size of your brush. We've also got the feather, so that's gonna control how quickly, uh, or how soft the brush is, and how quickly it's gonna fall off on the edges. And then we've also got the flow. Flow is the opacity of the brush. So adding multiple clicks over the same area with a lower flow will help you to build on that opacity. Then we've got the density. So you think of the density as the upper limit of the opacity of that brush. So if you only ever wanted to cap the opacity of a, of a brush at 80% or 50% or sometimes even lower, that's where you would set that value. I've got mine set to 100 right now. Now the second shortcut is the O key and that's gonna show our overlay. So if I make a selection here, now I'm just clicking on the screen and I press the O key, that's going to bring up the selection. So this is what I've just selected as you can see here in red. Now, if I make any changes, it's not going to show up there. It's only gonna show, it's only gonna show where that effect is being applied. Once I hit the O key again and then make a change, now you can see the adjustment is being made. So the overlay is a really nice guide when you're creating selections to see exactly what you're doing and what parts of the image you're going to be affecting. One of the most common ways I use an adjustment brush is to do some subtle skin softening, especially when I'm shooting portraits. So we've got a beautiful shot of our model cat and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in one to two. Another little tip here is if you hold the space bar down, you can move the canvas around, which is really handy while you're making your selections. And what I'm going to do here is press the O key to bring up our overlay once again so that we can see what we're doing. And I'm just gonna be brushing over her skin. So as you can see here, I'm gonna be making a fairly rough adjustment. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm actually going to avoid her eyes, um, the details of her nose, uh, her eyebrows as well as her lips. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll be changing the size of the brush as we go. You guys can see my settings on the right hand side. I've got the feather at 100 and the flow at 100. And then I'm just varying the size of this brush as I go around as I need. So just making a fairly quick adjustment here for the sake of this video. And what I can actually do if I accidentally brush over a part of the image that I didn't want to select is just hold the Option key or Alt if you're using Windows and that's going to bring up another brush. And as you can see on the right hand side now, it has selected the Erase brush and you can also edit the size, feather and flow of this brush as well. So I'm going to just scroll and adjust the size of this brush and still holding the Alt or Option key, I'm gonna brush in and as you can see, that's getting rid of my selection. So that's a really handy tool if you ever brush over accidentally an edge or you just need to clean some stuff up. So if I should do a really messy job around her cheek here, I can come in and I can cut back that area and then clean it up. So that's really handy. I've done a really quick and dirty selection here. I'm gonna press O again to get rid of my overlay. And now I'm gonna come over into the right hand side and this is usually what I do. You guys can totally play around with all these different options and see what works for you. But I like using the texture slider. In the later versions of Lightroom, they added this texture slider. So if we just bring that down to around negative 50, obviously this will change depending on how drastic you want that skin softening to be. And if we come down here to this little on off toggle button in the bottom left hand corner, um, we can turn it off and then on again. And as you can see, that softened up the skin, but it hasn't taken away sharpness from any of the features of Cat's face. 
Another powerful feature is using adjustment brush presets. So if I wanted to create a preset out of this brush, all I would do is make my changes. So I'm gonna take the texture down once again to negative 50, and I'm also gonna reduce the contrast a little bit as well, so maybe negative 10. Then I'm gonna come up to this little option here that says custom, and I'm going to save the current settings as a new preset. So now I can call that skin softening and hit create. And now I've got a preset brush that I can use again next time I need to do some skin softening. Next up, I'm gonna show you guys one way I would use the adjustment brush on a landscape image. And I'm gonna show you guys how to use auto mask. I'm going to hit the K key to create a brand new adjustment brush. And then I'm gonna hit O, which is gonna show our overlay. And by holding the A key on the keyboard, we're going to switch on our auto mask. And this is going to create an automatic mask. Lightroom is gonna work its magic and try to figure out what we're trying to select. And it's going to do it based off that little circle with the crosshair in the middle of the adjustment brush. So what I'm going to do while still holding the A key is come along here and uh, I'm going to be selecting the sky. And then once we get down here towards the horizon, I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm going to do a series of clicks along the horizon here. And I'm going to make sure that the crosshair doesn't actually go below the horizon. And as you can see, Lightroom has done a pretty good job of only selecting the sky in this image with the auto mask. If we just hit the O key again, now we can start making some slight adjustments. So I'm just going to bring the exposure of the sky down. And as you can see, the sky is really popping out now. You don't want to go too crazy with this as it can start looking a little bit too fake. I also want to make the sky look a little bit more blue in this photo, I think. So now I'm going to show you guys how to use the range mask in combination with the adjustment brush. So I've got a really nice photo of my friend Matt here who's posing in between these two mountains and we've already made some edits to this photo and I've got a new adjustment brush ready to go here. So I've increased the size of my adjustment brush and I'm actually going to brush over most of the image here um, and I'm just going to stop just above the horizon. As you can see there's like a little bit bleeding over but that won't matter for this. And what we're going to do is come down to this option uh, right at the bottom of our adjustment brush menu where it says range mask. Now you're going to want to click on this and select luminance. What we want to do here is only select parts of the image that are of a certain brightness. And that's where this luminance selection comes in. So if we notice down here in the panel now we've got range and smoothness. Now in this range slider, the left hand side is going to represent our shadows and the right hand side is going to represent our highlights, just like a histogram. So if we pull up the left hand side of this slider, you'll begin to see that the darker parts of this image, the selection is going to go away. It's going to become deselected and we're only going to be selecting the highlights in this image. So as you can see, there's barely any selection over Matt now, and also there's none over the water and also the rocks at the bottom of this image. Now we can hit the O key, and what we can do is bring the exposure down. And as you can see, that's added a lot of moodiness into the sky, and we've brought back a lot of that detail in the clouds and the fog there. And I think this just brings a new element of drama to the photo. We can also add a little bit of dehaze in there to add a little bit more drama as well. And the most important thing is that this adjustment brush is not going to affect any of our shadows. So it's not going to affect the bottom half of our image, which is already really dark. We don't wanna make that any darker than it is. And we just wanna bring out the drama in that sky. So now I'm going to show you guys another way to use the range mask and it's not luminance this time. Instead, we're going to use the color option. So we've got another photo of our friend Matt here and we're going to hit the K key to create a new adjustment brush and then the O key once again so that we can see our overlay. Now I'm going to start brushing in over his red sweater here. So if I just make a pretty rough selection, I don't really have to be precise as we're going to be using the range mask to refine our selection. And now if we come over once again to our range mask and then we go to color, we get this little eyedropper. So what we're gonna do with the eyedropper is just click on it and then we're gonna bring it over onto our image and you can draw a square anywhere on the image to select the range of colors. So if I just draw a nice big box here on Matt's chest, that's gonna pick up all of the colors from his sweater. 
and then that's going to refine the selection so that it only selects those colors. Now that we've refined our selection, you can see that it's kind of hard to see the overlay because it's red and matte sweater is also red. But there's a little trick here to fix this. So if we press Shift O, we can actually change the color of our overlay so we can accurately see what we're doing. So that's really cool as well. Now I can come up to this hue adjustment and I can make slight changes. And as you can see, we're changing the color of Matt's sweater. And we can also adjust the saturation. So make it a little bit less bright. Or we can make it brighter if we want to. With the adjustment brush and the color range mask, you can really start manipulating the colors in your image. One last thing, if you guys come up here to this inverted triangle in the top right hand corner of the adjustment brush menu and click on this, um, it's going to collapse that menu. And now we have this amount slider. And this is going to control all of the sliders in your adjustment overall. And it's going to affect the overall strength of the adjustment that you just made. So if you make a selection and then continue editing your photo, then at the end you think the adjustments that I made are a little bit too strong, you can come back in and dial them back. I wanted to show you guys one more example of the auto mask and sort of my strategy on how I get the best results. I've got a new adjustment brush here and when I hold down the A key, we're gonna bring up the auto mask. Now, when you drag the adjustment brush across the image, you'll see that it doesn't do the best job of masking out that edge. Now, if I just delete that adjustment brush here and I just do individual clicks and keeping in mind that the area that's going to be selected is under the crosshair in the middle of the adjustment brush, not going into those clouds and just doing these individual clicks really helps to keep that selection nice and clean. So I found that individual clicks works a little bit better than simply dragging the brush over the image. And if I hit the O key um, and then pull back this sky, and maybe make it a little bit more blue, you can see that that's a pretty clean selection. So I would recommend doing the individual click strategy when you're trying to get a really refined edge selection with the auto mask. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you learned something from it. I personally love learning new things, especially when it comes to photo and video editing. If you're anything like me and have an unrelenting thirst for knowledge when it comes to anything creative, then Skillshare is one of the best resources you could have at your disposal. Skillshare classes are curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I've teamed up with Skillshare to give you guys a really exciting offer. The first 1000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this and leave a like down below if this helped you out in any way. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.